Hello there, this is Miriam, Holistic Life Coach and Mind Body Practitioner at Pain Outside the Box. And today I will be focusing on giving you some tips on what you can do if you get woken up in the middle of the night with pain or symptoms. So some of you might already be aware of the mind-body connection, of TMS, of pain reprocessing. And if you are, you would know that uh, the way that we think about our pain and our symptoms can affect the intensity of the pain we get. And in a lot of conditions as well, changing our thinking and changing our responses to the pain can actually help us eliminate symptoms. Because in a lot of cases of chronic pain, symptoms are a kind of danger signal, which means that the more we fear them, the more likely we are to feel them in certain circumstances. It's like a vicious cycle. So that's a kind of summary of how the mind-body connection works and of what I teach. I teach people how to overcome chronic pain by lowering their fear responses, um, by reacting differently to the pain so that they get out of this conditioned pattern of getting pain during certain activities okay or during certain situations or in some cases every day now the thing is what if you get symptoms waking you up in the middle of the night and uh, you can't employ the usual techniques of self-talk of uh, uh, meditation so it's a little bit more difficult when you're unprepared for this onset of pain and it can be really frustrating and very annoying it can be really scary Okay, but it's much more common than you think. I often get people telling me that this is their main problem, that they just get woken up in the middle of the night with intense symptoms. And it's trickier than when you start getting pain during the day because you can maybe employ certain techniques and tools to calm yourself down, and to suit yourself, to respond differently to the pain. But when it happens in the middle of the night, of course, you're, it's so sudden, um, it's shocking and uh, just um, left with, with the pain and you're annoyed because you can't get on with your sleep. So there's, there are many factors involved. So first of all, let's try to understand what's happening in such a case. So although we are sleeping at night, our subconscious brain is still very, very active. In fact, it might be more active than during the day. And uh, in my opinion, or from my observations, this is the reason why some people get symptoms in the middle of the night. So they can be triggered due to a dream that you might not even remember. It could also be a conditioned response. The body learns to behave in that way at a certain time of the night, because the way that our body behaves, um, it depends on certain patterns. It could have picked up this pattern of generating symptoms for some reason in the middle of the night. It's an, an unlucky pattern to adopt, but unfortunately it happens. And usually, of course, the pain is triggered by the subconscious brain. You have no control over it. So first things first, here, here is one main tip that I'd like to share um, if this is affecting you. The worst thing you can do when this happens is to react with upsetness, fear and frustration. I know it's frustrating, but the worst thing that you could do is to think of yourself as the unluckiest being on the planet and to worry about having this episode over and over again, because then you're conditioning yourself to experience it over and over again. So my tip for today, and this tip applies also to people who get sudden pain during the day, okay, who are taken by surprise by their symptoms during the day. The most effective tip I found, regardless of why you are getting symptoms at that time and so suddenly, is to attempt to get curious about the symptoms. So this would look like this. You would be jolted awake by the symptoms, of course, you're going to be anxious. Um, you might even have something similar to a panic attack alongside the symptoms, or the symptom itself might be a panic attack in some cases. Okay. Um, the emotion, of course, will be strong, especially because you've been taken out of your sleep. You've been taken by surprise. You've, you've been jolted awake. Um, so the first thing you need to do as soon as possible is instead of wanting the symptoms to go away 
or starting to think along the lines of, oh, this is terrible, I want you to observe your symptoms as minutely as possible in all their details. So this decision would take place in a fraction of a second if you train yourself. In a fraction of a second, you can train yourself to really get curious about what you're feeling. To feel it and almost to welcome the sensation in just for a few seconds. And as I said, you can also do this during the day if you are surprised by symptoms of, or if you're starting to get really, really bothered. It is similar to uh, what we call somatic tracking um, in pain reprocessing, but it takes much less to do, takes much less time. It should take much less time, especially if the symptom is intense. I would just suggest a few seconds. Let's say you're um, woken up and you're feeling pain in your stomach or in your shoulder. Just a few seconds of getting curious about how that feels like, of being with it. After that, you might find that the symptom will subside. If it doesn't, feel free to wake up, have a cup of tea, do whatever it takes to suit yourself. Okay. Some people like to meditate back to sleep. Um, some people like to take a walk. Okay. Anything that can bring some uh, calming, relaxing effect on you. Anything that suits you or that distracts you from the intensity or from the seriousness around the pain. The worst thing you can do is to think about it seriously, to think about it as a very, very serious and life-threatening issue. By life-threatening, I mean that you can view it as your worst enemy, of course, if it interrupts your sleep, if it's painful, okay, if it's shocking. You're likely to view it as an enemy, as something that you that's controlling you. Um, and that's actually the worst thing that you can do. So these are the two suggestions. I'll repeat them. As you're jolted awake or as you're surprised by the symptom, spend a few seconds getting as curious as you can about the symptom. Pretend that you're absolutely interested and curious about it. Pretend that you want to know more about it. After that, when you've given it this kind of curious attention, you can either try to go back to sleep if the symptom diminishes, okay, without thinking more about it as much as possible. So just focus on the comfort of the bed, um, on the silence around you. You can meditate yourself to sleep as well. Or else if the symptom is still intense and you know it's going to be really hard to get back to sleep, um, go get a cup of tea, take a walk, do anything that feels soothing or distracting. And please, please try to keep your thoughts away from thinking alongside the victim mentality, from thinking about how sad this is, how shocking this is, how unlucky you are um, to be going through this. Okay? Trust me, if you do this enough times, you might notice that one fine night, the symptoms will not wake you up. Besides that, of course, one final tip, if you notice that there's a common theme to your dream, okay, that's waking you up with symptoms, then it might be a good idea to address that theme with a counselor or with a therapist, okay, to see what it means to you, to see what is triggering your symptoms in this way. Because sometimes our dreams can say a lot um, about what we're experiencing, about what we are repressing, okay? So if you notice that the symptoms come up after a specific dream around a certain person or a certain situation, then that might be something to explore with a therapist or in your own journaling to try and get to the bottom of this. Okay, so let me know in the comments if you try this or if this specific issue affects you. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about pain reprocessing, watch some of my other videos, especially my somatic tracking exercise, which will teach you a process on how to get curious about your symptoms. That's all from me from today, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.